we will now look at using automated parameter estimation and automated parameter sensitivity as part of the power plant model validation workflow. I spent some time manually adjusting a select number of parameters and assessing their influence on system response using both PQ replay and VF replay. I'm going to run a comparison and show you where I got to. All right, I'll just expand this figure a bit. What we have here is the VF response from PQ replay and PQ response from VF replay. Blue is the measured response, red is the corrupt model response, and yellow is where I got to with manual tuning. So you can see that I have made an improvement. At this stage, I have two options. I could continue manually tuning the response or I could submit the parameters I have changed manually to automated parameter estimation. In this case, I reckon I'm at the knee of the Pareto curve, and so automated parameter estimation is the most efficient way forward. You can see here in lines 9 through 15 that I modified seven parameters. If I scroll down, you can see from line 94 that I will submit five parameters to automated parameter estimation. I made the judgment that my modified values for Gen H and Gov K Turb were good enough. In lines 101 and 103, I am setting maximum and minimum bounds on the parameters. In the absence of engineering insight on these specific parameters, I'm simply constraining the maximum to be two times the original and the minimum to be half the original. These parameter constraints could be set individually as appropriate if more information was available. Before I start automated parameter estimation, I'll quickly go back to the Simulink model to talk about the objective function. If I double click on the objective block and look at the scope, we can see that we have four traces. Simulated V from the PQ replay, which is the blue response. Simulated F from the PQ replay, which is the yellow response. Simulated P from the VF replay, which is the red response. And simulated Q from the VF replay, which is the green response. These responses are normalized. The objective function is calculated as a sum square error between the measured normalized responses, which are not shown in this particular block, and the simulated normalized responses. We'll see this comparison in more detail once the parameter estimation is started. One more point I would like to make here is that while I am using both PQ replay and VF replay simultaneously, I could proceed with just one of those paradigms. For example, if you look at the literature on this subject, there is a heavy emphasis on VF replay. What we have found is that combining both PQ replay and VF replay provides the most insightful and robust framework for accurate model calibration. I will now run the parameter estimation script. So what is happening here is that the simulation will be run multiple times so that the optimization routine can calculate the gradients it needs to make parameter updates. After each run, we'll see the response of the system. So it's running now, so it'll be a second or two. We'll see that first response. So we see the response here as well as the value of the objective function. You can't read too much into these values on a simulation by simulation basis, as many simulations will be required. The more parameters that you have, the more simulations you need. At this stage, I'm going to grab a coffee and leave this to run. I'll edit the video and I'll tell you how much time has passed when we return. Okay, I stopped the optimization after one hour and you can see that we've made good progress on improving the response. Our objective function was originally 0.77 and we've got it down to 0 0.095. What I'll now do is compare the optimized response with the the manual response, and we'll take a look. So we see here, blue's are measured, red was where I got to with this manual tuning, and the yellow is following the parameter estimation. So we can see that we've made some good progress here, and we actually now have a, a good response. There's still some discrepancy between measured and simulated, on voltage and on reactive power, but overall, this is a good response.
In the interest of seeing if we can improve this further, we'll now take a look at automated parameter sensitivity to give more insights on what additional parameters we can submit to automated parameter estimation. Let me just close this figure down and we'll go to the parameter sensitivity directory. What we're going to do is we will select all the system parameters except the parameters that I manually adjusted. I've got two reasons for not including the parameters I have already adjusted. First, I already know that they are sensitive. And second, reducing the number of parameters that I submit to parameter sensitivity is more computationally efficient. The way that I have set this up is to apply distributions to each parameter with a plus minus 2.5% bound. We don't know a priori how many iterations we need to gain an accurate parameter sensitivity measurement. So I've set this up to show me a sensitivity plot every 50 iterations. And when the sensitivity variance is minimized to an acceptable level, I can stop the sensitivity calculation. I'm now going to run the script. I'll grab myself another coffee and I'll edit the video and tell you how much time has passed for this part of the workflow. Okay, I stopped the parameter sensitivity calculation after approximately 90 minutes, as that was the stage at which the variance of the sensitivity values was acceptably small. I should point out here that you need only do a parameter sensitivity assessment once. Once you have the mapping of sensitive parameters, you can use it to inform future calibration efforts. In fact, the best time to do a parameter sensitivity assessment would be when you establish your baseline model. Looking at the mapping of sensitive parameters, we see that Gen X Q has the largest correlation with the objective function. Gen X PPD or XD double dash is also strongly correlated. This is a round rotor machine, and I made sure that XQ double dash or Gen X PPQ in this case was set equal to XD double dash for the parameter sensitivity assessment. Because of this, the sensitivity of XQ double dash comes out as zero for this particular calculation. While XD double dash is sensitive, we actually have a high degree of confidence in its value in this particular case, and so we'll not include it or XQ double dash in any subsequent parameter estimation runs. I should reinforce this point. Just because a parameter is sensitive does not mean that its value needs modified. This is where the need for engineering judgment as well as automated techniques is most valuable. Based on this sensitivity analysis, I chose Gen XQ and PSST4 to include in subsequent automated parameter estimation. I've already run that estimation and will now show you the result. So here we see the results. I have voltage comparison and frequency comparison from the PQ replay block and also active power comparison and reactive power comparison from the VF replay block. Blue response is measured. The yellow response is parameter estimation for just the manually selected parameters. And the red response is when I included the additional parameters Gen XQ and PSST4. So we can see from the objective function FX, we have been able to improve the overall fit by incorporating those additional parameters. Where we see the most improvement is actually in reactive power from the VF replay. And overall, we've improved the voltage comparison from the PQ replay. Although you can see there are some elements where the fit is not so good, but overall response is improved. So what we have looked at in this video is how we can incorporate automated parameter estimation and automated parameter sensitivity as a strong complement to engineering judgment in the power plant model validation task.